Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, and this is how to make a driving and a racing game in Unity, and welcome to episode 12. So this time we're going to look at a lap requirement, as well as a cutscene when we complete the race, which is going to involve a bit of music and a bit of script modification. So firstly what we'll do is let's have our lap requirement set as two. Now, um, I think it was last episode, we set up in our canvas our lap panel, and we currently have it. Let's just turn the view around. Set as three. So I'm going to set it as, let's say, two for now. So we'll have this as two. So the way this is going to work is when we cross the lap once, we're going to add one to the actual lap count. And once we've done that, two laps, we finish the game and we have a little scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the scene first that we're going to have uh, for our car. So let's go to our car down here. And on here, I'm going to have a cube which will rotate around the uh, car itself with a camera attached to it and just kind of like pan around it. So to do that, let's right click and let's have 3D object and cube. Let's bring the cube upwards to about there. And within that cube, we're going to have a camera. So right click on it and go on camera. Now we just need to adjust the camera. So if we pull it out, pull it up. Switch it around 180 degrees so it actually faces the car and then let's rotate it down so we can see about there. So I'm going to zoom out a little as well. So what's going to happen is this cube will end up rotating and obviously because the camera is attached to it, it will rotate the camera around the car as well. So we're going to need to set up a very simple rotation script. So right click, create C sharp script and we'll just call this finish rotate and simply put it's just one line of code really there's nothing too drastic about this one it's a very very simple line and it'll go in the void update so let's get rid of void start and any notes we don't need that we don't need to declare any variables so we can just do transform dot rotate and in brackets zero and we're going to rotate on the y so we need to put let's try one first off then zero and then space dot world. So we use space dot world just so it's all kind of within its own space. It just helps the script realize what's going on and save that script there. Next thing you need to do is just attach that to the cube. So drag and drop onto cube and let's rename the cube while we're at it and let's have finish cube. I'm just going to call it. And then I'm going to turn off the mesh renderer. And I'm also going to turn off the cube, which contains the camera for the car. So disable that up here just for now. And we'll just make sure this finished cube rotates around the car as we would expect. Yeah. So that'll do just fine. So let's re-enable our usual camera cube and disable the finish cube. Just so as we don't have that displaying at the same time, that would look a little bit silly. So what I think we'll do as well is we'll also bring in some finishing music. So if we go to uh, this little file here and drag and drop into Unity and it's available on the website for free. It's just a clip of music. It's nothing too um, drastic. It's just something I threw together just for the purpose of this tutorial. So if we drag and drop that onto finish cube, uh, make sure it is play on a wait just so as when this cube is activated, it will play the finishing audio. So next thing we need to do is sort out our lap requirement. So when we cross the finish line, we add one to our laps. So we need to go down to, it should be a lap complete trigger here. And on the lap complete script, what we need to do is we need to set in another variable. So public game object. And we'll have race finish. Uh, we'll just have race finish. And what we need to do is add in a void update. And what will happen in this void update is when the laps reach two, we'll activate this race finish object. So void update, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And if laps done is equal, that's double equal to um, 
two we said, didn't we? Yep, two. Open curly bracket, and what we do is race finish dot set active true. Close curly bracket and close curly bracket and save that script. Now you might wonder why we're not going to do the finishing sequence in this void update. Well, the reason being is because we want to reuse this lap complete on different um, levels and some levels may have laps to be done as three, four, five, whatever. So whereas we have uh, an object which is just going to have anything we do to finish the level, it's going to be different in each level. So we can just always use the same script. I'll explain a little bit more as we get to it anyway. So once we've done that, what we need to do is set another game object similar to how we've got lap complete trigger. And what this will basically do is activate right after the lap complete trigger. So if we set it active, we can see that there is the lap complete trigger and we need to set another trigger right after here. So what I'm going to do, cheat a little bit. I'm going to take the lap complete trigger, hold control, press D to duplicate. I'm just going to bring it up here just beneath and then disable lap complete trigger again. And this one, I'm going to remove the lap complete script. So right click, remove component. And now F2, I'm going to call this race finish trigger. So now we need to modify the script, which is part of the Unity standard assets. And we just need to change one small variable within it. So to do that, what we need to do is we can use the search bar down here and type in car controller. And you'll see this script right here. If we go into it, we need to change a variable called m top speed. So if we control an F on there and type in m underscore top speed, we should find it right here. So it's highlighted. And all we need to do is change that from private float and we need to change it to public static. Now the reason we're doing that is because we want to access this particular variable from a different script. So I'm going to save that script there and hopefully if we go back to Unity we shouldn't have any errors in it. Let's go to our console and clear. Perfect. No problems there at all. So now what we can do is we can create another script and reference that top speed to stop the car from moving at any point, but specifically within our script here, the race finish trigger. So let's head to our scripts folder, right click, create, C sharp script, and I think I'm going to call this one, same as all the others really, race finish. So within here, what we're going to need to do is at the very top, we need to put using unity standard assets dot vehicles dot car semicolon. So the reason we're doing that is so the script can actually reference this the car itself because we need to reference uh, the compo some components within it. So let's get rid of void start, void update. We don't need them. Same with any notes. And we're going to set a couple of variables. First one, public game object. And it's going to be the car. So let's have it my car. Next one is also a game object. Let's call it finish cam semicolon. And uh, what else are we going to need? Oh, I think we're going to need to stop the view mode changes, aren't we? So we're going to need public game object and we'll just call it view modes. Semicolon. And I'm thinking about the music that plays. So we're going to need to stop uh, this the level music as well. So public game object level music semicolon so it's going to be done via void on trigger enter open close bracket open curly bracket and the first thing we're going to want to do within the exact same uh, point of reference is we need to set the car as inactive sounds crazy but you'll see what happens 
my car dot set active false and in that very same frame we need to set that top speed to zero so we can do car controller dot m underscore top speed uh, is equal oh, I've got double m there it should be just be one m is equal to 0, 0.0 f semicolon just to ensure no movement actually occurs and again in that same frame we need to make my car dot get component and in spiky brackets car controller open close bracket dot enabled equals false so we turn one script off and we also need to turn off the car user control so my car dot get component in spiky brackets car user control open close bracket dot enabled equals false so you can see why up here we've used the using unity standard assets vehicles car so we can reference these two components here if you don't have this in this won't work so make sure you do put that top line in and also right after that what we'll do is uh, we'll set the car active again all in the same frame now one thing I note is even though it's all going to be in the same frame it still does do one line after the other so we although we set active here or I should say inactive it'll still do all this before it resets it active again so my car dot set active true and then what we'll do is let's turn off the um, in fact no we'll put the finish cam on first before we turn any of the cameras off so finish cam dot set active is true uh, level music is off so level music dot set active false and view modes dot set active false as well and then let's close curly bracket to close the on trigger enter and let's save that script so let's head back to unity hopefully we've got no errors perfect no errors and we need to attach that race finish script onto the race finish trigger right there so drag and drop and now let's set the variables so my car is going to be the car itself finish cam is going to be the finish cube here view modes um, is going to be cube here which is with all our cameras and level music is just going to be level music right there and what we need to do now is turn off race finish trigger so we need to untick it here and then in lap complete trigger we just need to add in a race finish which is that race finish trigger that we just added that script to um okay so we've got a lap time box just there let me try and remember what that was so let's just quickly check so we have lap time box okay i don't think that's relevant to be honest but okay let's just see what happens as we try this out now we shouldn't have any problems i don't see any happening anyway so off we go racing away i'll try try my best carries not to crash my uh, driving skills in this still have So far, so good. It's also a good idea to do this because we can test all the things with our scripts as well. Everything else looks like it's working as we would expect. Perhaps change. to turn off that race finish trigger as well so we need to add in an extra line in race finish so we need an extra variable so public game object let's call it complete trig semicolon and let's turn off after my car 
complete trig dot set active false. And let's save that and add that to our um, variables just there. So lap complete trigger over to there. And what I'm going to do to kind of speed things up, I'm going to change laps done to one and then reset it back to two just so I don't have to complete one lap now. So I'm not wasting too much time. So after one lap, we should be able to see our complete sequence in four. So let's give this a go. If any of you guys want to show off what driving games you've made so far, please leave them in the comments. Your footage, pictures, anything, just let me know. Okay. That did not work. Why did that not work? That is very strange. So. Okay, so I'm a little bit confused there, guys. A little bit confused. So what I might do, just to try and even speed this up even more, <clears throat> excuse me, is set the lap complete trigger, we'll leave that alone, we'll set the race finish trigger on, and I'll move it just after the finish line, and then we'll see what happens as we drive into it. So if we imagine completing the actual race now. So that does look like there's a bit of a problem here because the music isn't playing as we would expect. So what I may do, we'll try one last thing here just to see if we can get this working as we would hope for. What I'll do is I'll attach to, um, let's attach this as a different object, shall we? So let's have uh, on the car, right click, and create empty. And instead of actually having the audio source there, we'll remove it from there and we'll attach it to this game object. So music, race finish, onto there. Uh, untick play on awake because we don't want it to play on awake. Right click, uh, rename. And we'll have this as finish music. And then, fingers crossed, let's head to our race finish script. Public. Uh, audio source, let's call it finish music, semicolon, and let's add it to the bottom just here. Finish music dot play. Oh, close bracket, semicolon, save. Um, we just need to set that variable in there. So drag and drop, finish music across. And let's try this out now. So we should be able to cross this uh, race finish trigger and everything should work. Do you know what guys? I actually suspect it is the audio file itself which is doing that. I suspect the audio file may be corrupted. Um, let's try one last thing just to check if it is corrupted or not. But Let's place it there and then also turn off the box collider. So. Fingers crossed, this is a, a great session of error solving or problem solving, I should say. We'll do this dot get component and in spiky brackets box collider dot enabled equals false semicolon save. And now I think it's like the fourth time, fifth time lucky. We might actually have something here, guys. Perfect. So we have this working as we would expect. So you can imagine that we've raced now, we've finished the race, this is our image sequence. So what I want to happen next time is we'll make um, a key press where we'll have maybe a fade screen so we'll fade out and into the next race. So we'll probably look at that next time to be honest. As well as some more scenes, we'll look at a main menu, um, we'll look, start looking at a second track and we'll start looking at track select. So all these things are all going to come together one by one now to actually make a racing game. And we're only 12 episodes in, but we are a long way from being done. There's lots of other cool little things that we're going to work in as we go along. So guys, until next time, thank you very much for watching.